everyone. How you doing? We are starting with the bow today. This is our first of four straight videos talking about bow playing. Um, it's something that I do a lot of and I think is totally underrepresented in acoustic music and bluegrass music. Um, the bass has so many amazing textures um, under the bow and I'm really excited to uh, talk about it with you and give you some pointers to get you off on the right foot. So um, first things first, I just want to talk about bow care and, um, you know, how you want to tighten it and what rosin you want to use, all that. So um, I'm loosening my bow now because um, if you have a bow sitting in your bow case, um, you want it to be loose. And what loose means is that I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the hairs are very, very, um, I don't know, jiggly, I guess is a good way to put it. It's like they're not very taut. You can see a lot of different hairs um, in like the vertical sphere um, and uh, they move around when you shake the bow. So that's what loose means. Also the end here, um, this part is called the frog. And um, here's the part where you loosen and tighten the hair. That should be out. You should be able to see the stick a little bit um, when it's loose. So when it's in the case and when you're not playing it, um, you want the hairs to be loose. Um, having the hairs tight creates a lot of pressure on the stick. Um, and you really only want that when you're playing. So it should look like this when you pick it out of the case. Um, so from there, first thing you want to do is tighten it using the silver piece at the end. It could be a different color potentially on yours. Um, but tighten it to a point where I, I tighten it to a point where my hair, when I press down on the string, the hardest I can, it does not touch the stick. That's my metric. Um, so you want to be able to give it as much gas as you know possible. Um, and still the hair is not going to touch the stick when you press down. That's where you want it to be. Um, so you tighten it up, right? And you grab your rosin. I use pops rosin, uh, super common, uh, among bassists. It's really sticky. Uh, in the summer, actually, it starts like melting probably in a couple months here. I'm going to start having some liquidy rosin. Um, but it's really, really awesome. And especially awesome in the, in the winter, uh, because it is so sticky and a lot of rosins dry out. Uh, but I use it year round. Um, so the way that I apply my rosin is you take the cake out of the, uh, out of the container, hold it in your left hand, and then just move your bow up and down it. And you can do this any number of times. If you haven't played with the bow at all, or have barely played with the bow, or haven't played with the bow lately, give it a lot of rosin. If you play a lot, give it a couple swipes. I usually do like four or five. Just up and down. It's probably good enough. Put your rosin back. And to keep, to keep the rosin from drying out, always cover it when you're done. Never leave it uncovered, okay? All right, so now that we got our rosin, our bow's nice and tight, we can start talking about how to hold the bow. And um, the thing that my teacher at Berkeley always taught me was you want your hand to kind of come out super natural. Let your hand just kind of fall in front of you. And, you know, you'll see your thumbs loose, your fingers are loose. That's how you want to start. Boop. And then just put the bow into your hand. It's just like bring the bow to your right hand. And of course, this is for French bow. If you're a German bow player, the only difference is you just hand your hand out in an underhand grip and bring your bow to it. Either way, the same thing applies. But for French, overhand. Oh, and I'll explain that in a second too for those of you who don't know it. Um, and you just let your hand kind of fall and uh, hold the bow. Um, so French and German, um, really quick, it's, bass is the only string instrument that has two different types of bows that people use. Um, violin, viola, cello, everyone plays with the French bow. With bass, there's this old school way of playing underhand with this bow called the German bow. And that part that I mentioned earlier, the frog, which is the black part here, is way bigger on a German bow. And you actually can fit two of your fingers on your right hand in that frog and hold it underhand. Um, Chris Wood is a really good example of a bass player who's more in like the roots folk scene that plays German. 
Uh, a lot of people um, who are in the acoustic music scene will play French, um, probably thanks to Edgar Meyer, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, if you don't know who Edgar Meyer is, um, he's a really big inspiration to me. And uh, yeah, we'll probably look at some of his stuff this this month. I assume that'll be a good thing to do for for uh, maybe the solo uh, or melody week. All right, so again, hand goes out, put the bow in it. What you want is, this is actually identical to how you hold the bow, or hold the bass, I should say, with your left hand. You want your middle finger and your thumb to be parallel. And your thumb fits into the divot in between the stick and the frog. So it just kind of rests in there. So your middle finger should always be right at the end of the hairs. I kind of let my middle finger rest um, right before that steel part, um, before the frog. And... Uh, it kind of is always parallel to the thumb. So that's that's to make sure you don't choke up too much on the bow. You're not holding it like up here and, and you're not holding it too far back. So it's a nice balanced place to hold it. So that's what it looks like. Everyone's bow grip's a little bit different. So don't worry if yours isn't identical to what this looks like. But I'd say generally keep your hand loose, put the bow in, make sure your thumb and middle finger are parallel. Those are the uh, the important things. So we got the bow in the hand. We've come this far. What's next? Um, next is think, figuring out how to get a good sound with the bow on the strings. Um, there are three different categories um, that are important to look at when you have the bow. Speed, which is how fast are you going back and forth on the string? Uh, pressure, we talked about earlier, you know, to figure out how tight we are, want our hairs. How much pressure are you putting on the string? That's vertical. That's like, are you pressing way down or is it very, very light or somewhere in between? Uh, and location is the third. Location is the distance between the end of the fingerboard and the bridge. That's where you typically play with the bow. Where are you in that? And the sound will differ widely uh, depending on where your bow is. So those are the three elements of playing with a bow that are really always important to consider when you're playing, all right? Um, so I think for today, I just want to demonstrate how to get a good sound on all four open strings and talk about the little differences between the four. So we'll start with the G string. Easiest one to get a good sound because it's the uh, lightest gauge, um, very thin string. And where I like to put the bow location-wise uh, is typically like one third of the way down to the bridge. So like about here, it's a real sweet spot for playing down in this area of the bass. And because we're on a thinner string, um, my speed will be faster. So the thinner the string, the faster you go. And that really applies when you get up into the higher parts of the G string, you're moving really quickly. And pressure, a little lighter. Again, on a thin string, you wanna exert less pressure and it gets heavier as you go down towards the E string. So to recap, one third down um, on the string and pressure relatively light. You'll get a good balance. You know, you'll figure it out when you start messing around and speed, we're gonna go pretty quickly. Sounds like this. Nice balanced sound. It's not overly pushed, um, but it's nice and connected. You're getting good tone. Uh, and that's the kind of sound you want to try to emulate when you pick up the bow. Just like that, okay? And as we go down the strings, um, location will stay the same because we're playing open strings all the way down. So if you play your open string, your location doesn't change. Location's more about where you're going on the bass. And, you know, eventually uh, we will be talking about playing up in thumb position. Um, and that's where location will change and the bow moves down towards the bridge. So it's kind of like, that's more of your, uh, what is that, Y axis? I think it's the Y axis there, vertical. So location stays the same on the D string. A Little bit more pressure and you can slow down a little bit and still get a good sound. All right, next A string, again, a little bit more pressure, a little slower. Yeah. 
And last but not least, the elevator cable of the base, the E string. Um, give it a lot of pressure and you can slow it way down. And when I say pressure, um, that's not coming from the finger so much as it is from the arm. There's a similar thing with bow playing as there is with pits when we talk about arm weight. Um, you know, you can pick, hold your hand up like this, uh, the mic's in front of me here, but, and let it down, let it fall down to your side just naturally, the same way we do when we're playing pits. There's just that like natural gravitational pull. And that's what we're looking for when we play with the bow. When I say pressure, we're talking about using the entire arm from shoulder to fingers, not just the hand, okay? Um, so that should make it easier to really dig into that low string uh, without feeling like you're, you're, you're straining too much. Again, I, maybe I'll do it this way. So your hand can come out here, just let it fall to the string. That whole mechanism should be going into the string. Oh yeah. And you'll be able to get a nice big sound without doing much work if you're using shoulder to fingers, the whole thing. Um, one last thing for today, um, you know, for your homework for this week, just try messing around with these long tones. Don't even worry about a metronome yet or anything like that. I just want you to play all the way from the frog, which is that part we talked about before, to the tip. This is the tip of the bow. Just play that back and forth and worry about getting a really good sound um, and connecting all these elements. When you're doing a bow change, um, there's a problem that a lot of people fall into, which is... Uh, and sorry to explain bow change is when you're going back and forth, you know, it's that moment where you change direction. Um, some people, and I used to do this a lot, will like give a bit more pressure, you know, or something like that. Um, but you, what you want to do is not change anything. If you think about it, you're already getting a great sound when you're playing, you know, in one direction. Why do anything different when you go back to the other direction? Just keep it the same. Uh, a really great bass player, Ethan Yojevitz, um, talked about, it's kind of like a caveman motion. Um, and uh, if you haven't heard Ethan, he's another guy to look out for. He is on the Sierra Hull record, Weighted Mind, um, just duo bass and mandolin for the most part. So uh, good friend of mine and a really, really killer bass player. So learn that from him. Caveman shifting, cave woman shifting, cave person shifting for 2021. Um, so yeah, really don't overdo it. Just go back and forth, no change. You want those changes to be invisible, you know, unless you're intentionally going for some accent or something. But again, that's intentional. Save that for when you have intention, you know, when you just want something to kind of disappear, stick to that cave person bowing motion when you're shifting. Um, so yeah, that's all for today, everyone. Um, so again, make sure that bow is nice and loose when it's in the case or on the wall. Don't leave it tight after you play and then tighten it up, put some rosin on and uh, work on your long tones. So super excited for this month. We're going to be getting into some really cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really thrilled to be talking about the bow, um, in this new chapter. So I'll see you next week, everyone, and, uh, have fun with the bow.